story of Prophet Nuh alayhi salam. Many years had passed after the time of Prophet Adam alayhi salam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent another Prophet, Nuh alayhi salam, to earth 1,000 years after sending Prophet Adam alayhi salam. There were many people living on earth now. There was a huge growth in the population. Unfortunately, evil shaitan had tricked mankind in the meantime. All the people living on earth were now worshipping idols. It was during this time that Allah sent another prophet, Prophet Nuh alayhi salam, to guide the people back on earth. The prophet started preaching about Allah to people. Fear Allah and do what Allah says, shouted the prophet to everyone. But the people didn't care and they ignored him. The prophet didn't lose faith and continued with his mission. But the people continued worshipping the idols. But the prophet was very patient. Don't you understand that it was Allah who created this whole world? shouted the prophet. It was Allah who created the sun, the moon and the stars you see in the sky. He created the rivers, the mountains, the trees and everything that you see around. He did this all for you and you alone. Then why are you not showing him any respect? Why are you worshipping these idols? The people were now starting to get irritated with this old man. Who do you think you are? You are just another man. We think that you are lying. Go away and leave us alone, they told him. But not everyone ignored him. Some people thought that the prophet was saying the truth. Most of them were weak and poor. When they listened to the prophet, they realized that they were committing a sin by worshipping the idols. Now there were believers and non-believers on earth. Those who worshipped Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the others who continued idol worship. The Prophet continued preaching to the people for many years and the disbelievers couldn't stand the Prophet any longer. If you don't stop preaching your lies, we will stone you, they shouted. But the Prophet ignored them and continued preaching to people day and night. The disbelievers started throwing stones at the Prophet. He was even beaten with sticks. You are no different from us, and why should we listen to you? I'm telling you the truth, the Prophet pleaded to them. You are committing a sin by worshipping the idols. Many years had passed. Nuh alayhi salam was disappointed by now. Even after calling out to the people for hundreds of years, only a handful of good people on earth listened to him. Whereas the number of disbelievers kept growing and growing. One night when the Prophet was offering his prayers, Allah spoke to him. Don't be sad, Nuh. God said to the Prophet, You have done what you were asked to. I am going to punish all the people on earth for their wrongdoings. Everyone on earth is going to die, except the Muslims and the animals, said Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. At the first step, God then asked the Prophet to plant many trees. Nuh alayhi salam didn't understand the reason behind this, but he listened to Allah and started planting trees as he was told. He also sought help from the good Muslims and they helped him. After many years, Allah spoke to the Prophet again. This time, he asked the Prophet to start building a ship. It has to be a huge ship, so huge that it can carry a pair of every animal on this earth. What is a ship, and how will I build a ship, thought the Prophet. No one had ever made a ship before. God gave him plans for building the ship. The Prophet started making the ship with the help of Maleks. No one knows the exact size of the ship. Some say it had a length of 600 feet, and others say it had a length of 2,400 feet. Whatever it was, the ship was so huge. The Prophet's children helped him in building the ship as well. The Prophet selected the mountains far away from the city 
to build the ship. Then they started building the ship. They needed wood to build the ship. Remember the trees they planted more than a hundred years back? Yes, they cut down those trees for wood. Then they started building the ship as per the plan. The men worked very hard, day and night, to build the ship. When the disbelievers saw the prophet building a ship, they started making fun of him. <laughs> you are such an old fool, they said. You are building the ship on top of a mountain. But the prophet kept calm and continued with his work. The people didn't know why he was building such a huge ship. They thought that he had lost his mind. After many months of hard work, the ship was finally ready. One night, Allah told the Prophet that he was going to flood the earth soon. How will I know? Will you be sending a sign? asked the Prophet. God told him that the day when he sees water coming out of the stove in his house, he will start flooding the earth. The next day, the Prophet was surprised to see a long queue of animals outside the ship. They had arrived in pairs, one male and a female. There were elephants, giraffes, lions, rabbits, parrots, and all other animals. The ship was soon filled with all variety of animals and birds. One day, while the Prophet was at his house, water started coming out of the stove. This is the sign I was waiting for, said the Prophet. He knew that the time of the flood had arrived. It has started raining outside as well. He ran out and called all the good Muslims who helped him build the ship. He asked all of them to board the ship immediately. The disbelievers didn't understand what was going on. So they kept laughing at the Prophet. <laughs> Look at the old fool, they said. This is just normal rain. He looks so terrified. The Prophet ignored them and asked his wives and sons to board the ship quickly. Everyone obeyed him except for one of his wives and her son who did not believe in the Prophet and neither did they help him in building the ship. I will save myself from the water, his son said. Don't worry about me, said his wife. The prophet pleaded with them, but they did not listen. The water levels had gone up by now, so the prophet ran to board the ship. A terrible flood broke out, and the water levels began to rise rapidly. The people now realized that the prophet's warnings were true. They ran toward the mountains to save themselves. The prophet saw his wife and son climbing a mountain. He shouted to them, Come and board the ship! Save yourself! But they ignored him and climbed to the top of the mountain, thinking that they could save themselves. Oops. Then, a huge wave, bigger than the mountain they stood on, came crashing on them. These enormous waves killed all other disbelievers. The water kept rising and rising, and after some time, the earth was completely filled with water. Then, Nuh salam said, Bismillah. When the Prophet uttered these words, the ship started moving. The rains had stopped by now, but the entire earth was filled with water. The Prophet knew that he had to keep sailing for a long time. The ship had 80 people in it. The Prophet had stored enough food for the men and the animals. Very interesting story about how God made the ship suitable for the silent sheep as well as the violet lions. The lions were down with fever when they boarded the ship. They lay down all the time, and that's how the sheep were saved. All the violent animals were down with some or other sickness. 
There was a lot of trouble with the rats, though. They were everywhere, destroying everything. They really were the troublemakers. The Prophet prayed to God, and it was then that Allah created the cats. The cats hunted down the rats, and after some time, the rats started behaving as well. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala solved many other problems in a similar way to help the Prophet. One day, the Prophet let out a crow to see if it could find land anywhere, but the crow didn't return at all. He waited for a few more days and then let out a dove this time. After a few days, the dove returned with a branch of olive tree in its beak. That was a sign. The Prophet now knew that they were close to the land. The ship sailed for some more time and finally reached on top of a mountain called Judy. The Prophet said, Bismillah, and the ship stopped moving. Their journey had finally come to an end. The Prophet released all the animals, birds, and insects first into the island. They went out and populated the earth back again. The Prophet and other Muslims came out of the ship slowly. He then put his forehead to the ground in prostration. And that was a new beginning for the human race. Did you like the story, kids? If you liked the video, don't forget to click that subscribe button and stay updated on all our videos. Please tell your friends about our channel as well. Don't miss our next episode, the story of Prophet Hud, alayhi salam. That's all for today. Goodbye!